money against the church. Hiyo ni kazi ya shetani kinyume na kanisa. Now we say demonic altars go along with the spiritual legal rights. Kasema kwamba ah ah laana za za kidebo zinaambatana na haki za kisheria. Demonic altars um madhabahu ya kidebo they go along with the spiritual or legal rights. Yanaungwa mkono ama yanaambatana na kanuni za kihaki za kitakio. There are vows that are made demonic altars. Kuna nadhiri ambazo zilifanywa katika agreements and covenants. Kuna makubaliano na adhabu. These are the things the enemy will use to attack families. Haya ndio mambo ambayo adui atatumia kushambulia jamii. We thank God because you have been redeemed from the power of the enemy. Tumshukuru kwa maana tumekombolewa kutoka kwa 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 mikono ya shetani. Then we also saw that at times the enemy may try to attack our lives. Pia tumeona ya kwamba shetani anaweza kujaribu kuchambulia maisha yetu through disobeying God's word. Kupitia kwetu sisi kutokutii neno la Mungu. Not other people may release curses to us ili kwamba watu wengine waachilie laana kwetu. And we say because there must be a cause for a curse. Na tukasema ya kwamba lazima uh, laana iwe na sababu. And if there is a cause that a curse will land on your life. Na kama kuna sababu hiyo laana itakuwa juu yako. We talk to people borrowing and not paying back. Kaongea kuhusu watu kukopa na hawaliki. And they are saying na wameokopa you borrow you don't pay you don't, you don't pay back una kopa na ulimi and the person you borrow that money may release curses upon your life yule mtu ule mkopa anaweza akaachilia laana juu ya maisha but that you are saying does not mean that that curse will not affect you ule wengi ya kwamba unaokoka hawezi kuzuia hiyo laana itwe juu yako no the way we live with our parents that we tunajua jinsi tunapishi na wazazi wetu we should have peace with our parents. Lazima tuwe na amani na wazazi wetu. There are people who don't care about their parents. Kuna watu hawajali wazazi wao. They die faithfully in the house of God. Wanatoa fukula kwa kuaminifu kwa nyumba ya Mungu. But they have got no business with their parents. Lakini hawana shughuli na wazazi wao. It's very wrong. Ni makosa. My parents have gone to be with the Lord all of them. Wazazi wangu wote wameshaenda kuwa na Mungu. But I had a catch I had, I had formed in my life. Lakini kuna tamaduni nilikuwa nimeunda katika maisha yangu. Every time I gave a time I would take some money to my father. Kila wakati nilipolipa fungu langu la 10, basi ningempelekea baba yangu pesa kiasi fulani. I had money for God and for my father. Nilikuwa na pesa za Mungu na za za baba yangu my mother when she was alive na hata mama yangu alipokuwa hai but they have all gone to be with the lord lakini wote wameshaenda sana but i did what i was supposed to do when they were present lakini nilifanya nilichoweza kufanya walipokuwa hai so it is not right when you come to the house of god you are saying you pay your tithe and you just neglect your parents kwa hivyo si si hadi unapokuja katika nyumba ya mungu unalipa fungu lako la mungu wa uaminifu na hawajali wazazi wako so mama was doing the work of god be city for wengine wetu wanafanya kazi ya Mungu kwa ulegefu. And that one opens a doorway for the devil to attack us. Na hilo linafungua lango kwa shetani kutushambulia. Other things do wrong businesses. Wacha wale wengine kufanya biashara biashara gushi. You may get a saint operating a bar. Naweza ukapata mteule anauza bar ama kilabu ya pombe. And then he says let Caesar be given to more Caesars. Na anasema na Kaisari apewe kilicho cha Kaisari. It is very wrong to do some businesses when you are shy. Ni makosa kufanya biashara zingine ukiwa umeokoka. Check them who operate bars. Waangalie vizuri wao kuendesha biashara za binadamu. The future of their children. Angalia siku za usoni za watoto wao. Check the end of their life. Angalia mwisho wa maisha yao. None of them ends life peacefully. Hakuna hata mmoja wao umaliza maisha yake kwa amani. So I say there are businesses we are not allowed to operate. Kwa hivyo kama wateule unazo biashara ambazo hatujaruhusiwa kuziendesha in the name of the Lord Jesus. Katika jina la Bwana Yesu. So now we can proceed from there. Sasa tunaanza tukaendelea kutoka hapa. I remember reading the scripture about foundations. Ninakumbuka nikisoma mstari juu ya misingi and if the foundations were destroyed what shall the righteous do? Ya kwamba iwapo 
misingi itaaliniwa wa wateule watafanya nini? Mzinda, that is what the Raisha should do when he comes to know how Nata. his foundations are. Na tukasema ya kwamba, kuna kile ya macho wateule wanapasa kufanya, wanapo elewa kusu misingi ya. Because demons understand their rights. Mwana mapopo uelewa hati. Which they have been agreed upon through demonic covenants. Mapopo uelewa hati ambazo wamepewa rusa kupitia agano za kipepo. So through those agreements. Wewe kupitia hayo maagano. The devil has legal rights. Shetani ana haki ya kishiri. To afflict Christians with faulty foundations. Kufinyilia wa kristo ambao wakona misingi ilio isio imana. So we must now go back and check our foundations. Wewe lazima sasa tugeje ya tuangalie misingi yetu. In the book of John it's up to six. Kawamuzi sita. Then verses 25. Chitari wa ishiti na taa. And they came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of her that the, thy father hath, hath and cut down the grove the gro- that is by it, and build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock in the in the ordered place and take the second bullock and offer a body sacrifice with the wood of the group which thou shalt cut down ikawa usiku huo huo bwana akamwambia mtwae ngombe wa baba yako yani ngombe wa pili kwa miaka saba ukaiangushe madhabahu ya baba ya aliyo nayo baba yako ukaikate ashera ile iliyo baliko nayo ukamjengee bwana mungu wako madhabahu juu ya ngome kwa taratibu zake kamtoa yule ngombe kwa pili na kumtoa awe sadaka kuteketezwa kwa kuni za ile ashera uliyoikata we must understand our god in heaven is a god of covenant zima tuelewe kwamba mungu wetu wa mbinguni ni mungu wa and he respects every covenant made by mankind na anaheshimu kila agano ambayo inafanywa na wanadamu the israelites were suffering wa israel walikuwa wanateseka because of the Midians. kwa sababu ya wamidiani so gideon was one of the israelites we got gideon alikuwa mmoja wa waisraeli and he was visited by an angel na akatekelewa na malaika and they It was the declaration he was now mighty man of valor na akatangaziwa ya kwamba wewe jemenai wa vita but he questioned the angel lakini akamswalisha malaika why then are we suffering kwa nini basi tunateseka our forefathers are given us the story of how you are delivered from Egypt mababa mababu zetu walitupa habari ya jinsi walivyokombolewa kutoka Misri so where are those miracles hiyo miujiza iko wapi Now he was told go in that strength of yours and you shall deliver the, 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 the nations. Sasa akamwambia ene kwa Mungu ulizonazo na utakomboa taifa. But then there was another intervention. Basi kulikuwa na kuingiliwa. There was a problem as to why this young man could not do what he was supposed to do. Kulikuwa na shida iliyosababisha huyu huyu kijana haya huyu mgumu mwanamume mchanga asifanye kile alichokuwa anapaswa kufanya. There was a problem in, in their family kulikuwa na shida katika jamii yao which could not allow god to use him bayo haiwe mruhusu mungu amtumie so if he was to be used of god bayo iwapo alikuwa atumiwe na mungu he had to repair the foundation of his father's family alikuwa arekebishe misingi ya jamii ya baba yake so he was told your father has made a covenant with naido akaambiwa ya kwamba baba yako alikuwa ametengeneza agano na miungu God is waiting to use you Mungu anaongoja kukutumia but he can't break that covenant lakini aweze kuvunja hiyo agano it is you to go and break that covenant first ni wewe uendende na uvunje hiyo agano then when you break that covenant na utakapoivunja it will be that God will use you takua ya kwamba Mungu atakutumia So you find he, he did it. He went on destroyed and pulled down that demonic altar which was raised or erected by his father. And when the altar was broken down, 
amrushwa chini immediately he raised another altar for god mara tu akainua madhabahu mengine ya mungu not only raising the altar he activated the altar na sio tu kuinua madhabahu ya mungu bali akaiweka katika utendaji kazi he sacrificed on it akatoa dhabihu juu yake and everything in that family changed na kila kitu katika hiyo jamii kikabadilika even his father changed hata babake akabadilika because when the villagers came to kill his son kwa sababu wakati majirani walipokuja kumuua mwanae they asked him how can you fight for a god let the god fight for himself ni wauliza je unaweza kumpigania mungu si mungu huyu mungu huyu mungu alipigania and the father was the priest of that altar na babake ndiye aliyekuwa kuhani kwa hiyo madhabahu but when it was broken down by a family member lakini ilipogunjwa na mtu wa jamii he was delivered from the power of that altar alikombolewa kutoka kwa nguvu za hiyo madhabahu and the god altar controlled him this time na madhabahu ya mungu ikamdhibiti kwa wakati he was disconnected from the villagers when they are saying kill Gideon walipokuwa wakisema muue Gideon he says no let god fight for himself anasema la acha hiyo miungu ijipigane if he was a god why can he fight for himself kama alikuwa mungu kwa nini asijipigane are you there wapo kwa hivyo it's important to understand vyema kuelewa our foundations misingi yetu can cause god not to use other ways to use inaweza ikasababisha mungu asikutumie jinsi anavyo That's why we read in the book of Lamentations. Ndio sababu tunasoma katika Maombolezo 57. Uh, 5:7. Our fathers have sinned and are not and we have borne their iniquities. Baba zetu walitenda dhambi hata hawapo na sisi tumechukua maombi yao. And the man was lamenting because their fathers had sinned. Alikuwa anaomboleza kwa maana baba zao walikuwa wametenda dhambi. They were suffering because of the sin of their forefathers. Walikuwa wanateseka kwa sababu ya dhambi ya baba zao. They were being afflicted because of what their their, their forefathers had done. Walikuwa wanafinyiliwa kwa sababu ya kile baba zao walikuwa wamefanya. So we have many families who are in that state. Kwa hivyo tuko na jamii nyingi ambazo ziko katika hiyo hali. Very important. 
Hilo ni jambo la msingi mno. Can read from Genesis. Can read from Genesis 28. Soma mwanzo 28. 11 through 22. 11 11 hadi 22. Altars can control destinies of people under its power. Madhabao chini ya nguvu zake yanaweza yakadhibiti hatima za watu. So your destiny can be controlled by an altar which is evil. Kwa hivyo hatima yako inaweza ikadhibitiwa na madhabao ambayo ungeniangiza. You may find you are right you are right in a in a family where we all, all of you you are prospering. Unaweza ukajipata unatoka katika jamii ya kwamba nyote tunafanikiwa. But one day one of your brother or one of your sister it's very hard for him or her to make headway in life. Lakini unapata kwamba mmoja wa ndugu zako wa kike au wa kiume imekuwa ngumu sana kujikimu kimaisha. In families we have sons and daughters of destiny. Katika jamii tunao ndugu uh, ama binti au wana wa hatima. And the enemy is always against those ones. Na adui ni kila mara yukinyume na You will stand against the destiny of a certain person in our family. Atasimama kinyume cha hatima ya mtu fulani katika jamii. Mostly firstborns and a go great suffering. Sana sana vifungua mimba wanapitia mateso mengi. The enemy is always against the firstborns. Adui yako kinyume sana na na vifungua mimba ama wazaliwa wa kwanza. That's what we keep your seat and your firstborn you are more than a conqueror. Na ndio sababu kama umeokoka na wewe ni mzaliwa wa kwanza wewe ni zaidi ya ushindi. Outers can speak on your behalf. Madhabao yanaweza yakanena kwa niaba yako. Either negatively and positively in your absence. Aina ni oppressor. Aina kwa uovu ama kwa wema mbele zako. Sasa ukiwa au ukiwa huko kama ukiwa hapo. They can speak on your behalf. Madhabao yanaweza yakanena kwa niaba yako. Either negatively or positively. Kwa wema au kwa uovu. Even when you are not there. Hata ukiwa hapo. Because behind every altar there is a deity. Kwa maana nyuma ya kila madhabao kuna hati. There is God. There is God. Kuna Mungu. There are forces, there are spirits that stand as the servants or the ministers of that altar. Kuna nguvu, kuna kuna uwezo ambao unasimama na hiyo madhabahu. What do we read in Revelation 16 verse 7? Na kusoma Ufunuo 16 mstari wa 7. And I heard another out of the altar say, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. Nikaisikia hiyo madhabahu ikisema, "Naam, Bwana Mungu Mungu mwenyezi" Kumo zako ni za kweli na haki. And I heard another out of the altar. Na nikasikia hiyo madhabao. Why can't you read from the Bible, please? We are reading Revelation. Revelation chapter 16. Verse, verse 7. Mfumuwa kumina sita, ustari wa sana. Nika nikaisikia hiyo madhabao nikisema Na Bwana Mungu mwenyezi ni ni za kweli na za haki hukumu zake So I heard a lamp out of the altar nikasikia ingine katika madhabao behind the altar there was somebody talking nyuma ya madhabao kulikuwa na mtu akiongea so behind the altars there are powers that stand for that altar kwa hivyo nyuma ya kila madhabao kuna nguvu ambazo usimama nyuma ya madhabao if it is an evil altar it will speak negative against your life kama ni madhabao ya uovu itanena uovu kinyume na maisha if it is a god ya altar it will speak positive of your life kama ni madhabao ya wema ya kiungu itaongea vizuri kuhusu maisha yako 
Lazima uelewe kwa jina la Yesu. Don't rush up and down looking for churches. Usikimbie kimbia hapa na pale utafuta makanisa. May God lead you to have a church. Mungu akuelekeze uwe na kanisa. Amen. Yes. Where the altar can you speak positive of your life. Ambapo madhabahu inaweza kunena wema juu ya maisha yako. This is why it is very wrong for people to run to other people who are praying for people in some small houses in the in the town. Thank you. 
An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and they shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen in all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. <laughs> Sadaka za kuteketezwa, sadaka za amani, kondoo zako na ngombe zako. Kila mahali nitakapo tia ukumbusho kwa jina langu. Hapo ndipo nitakapo nitakapo kujilia na kukubariki. You will give your all sacrifices. Mtatoa the bills zako in all places where I record my name. Kila mahali nitakapo tia ukumbusho kwa jina langu. That was a command. They were told by God. Where I have blessed my name, that is the place you're going to sacrifice these sacrifices I have told you. And they say, I will come unto thee and I will bless thee. You just for a time. 
You see how they will be affected by the demonic altars. Taona jinsi watakavyoshambuliwa na madhabahu ya kipepo. So when they are giving these sacrifices on demonic altars, hapo wanapotoa hizi dhabihu katika madhabahu ya kipepo. They they make some covenants. Wanafanya maagano which cause the demons to have some legal rights and madhabu ambayo usababisha mapepo kuwa na haki ya kisheria ya kiroho and therefore you will find kwa hivyo unapata because those demonic altars have been um, empowered by the sacrifices kwa sababu hizo haya madhabu ya kipepo yametiwa nguvu na dhabihu zile nimbovu affecting the people around that area yanaweza kuendelea kuadhiri watu katika maeneo yake but if you stand as a child of god yani ukisimama kama mtoto wa mungu you know they can affect until when you are in your house you cannot pray unachoa yanaweza kuadhiri mpaka hata ukiwa kwa nyumba uwezi ukaoma when you take your bible you start sleeping na unachukua biblia yako usome unaanza kukulala you can wake up in the morning to pray na uwezi ukaamka asubuhi kuomba why kwa nini nadiri huwekwa kwa mapepo ambayo yanapata ha, haki ya kisheria kufinyilia jamii so it's you it's me to know what i should do kwa hivyo ni wewe nami tujue jinsi tunapaswa kufanya now we have some indicators of these altars tunaisha tunazo ishara kama wakala zinazoashiria hii aina ya madhabahu because of time najaribu kuharakisha kwa sababu ya muda what do you mean you can do Taka kusoma Mathayo 22 verse 23 mstari wa 23 root 27 hadi and the same day came to him the Sadducees which say that there is no resurrection and asked him saying master Moses said if a man die having no children his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother now there we are with our seven brethren and the first when he had married a wife deceased and having no issue left his wife unto his brother likewise the second also and the third and the seventh and at last uh, and, and the last of all the woman died also madai shina mbili msero shina tatu ni shina saba siku ile masarukayo watu wasema wasemao ya kwamba hakuna kiyama wakamwelea wakamuliza wakisema mwalimu Musa alisema mtu akifa akiwa hana watoto ndugu yake na moyo yule mkewe ili ampatie ndugu ile mazaa basi kwetu kulikuwa na ndugu saba wa kwanza akaoa akafariki na na kwa kuwa hana mzao akamwachia ndugu ile mke wake bidyo hiyo kwa pili naye na watatu hata wote saba mwisho kwa wote yule mwisho kwa wote yule mwanamke akafa naye They say oh uh, no they are, they, are, they are with us seven brethren they are with us it was not a parable it was a reality ulikuwa uh, kweli haikuwa hadithi these seven brothers of the same family hawa ndugu saba kwa jamii moja there was a curse operating in that home ulikuwa na laana katika hiyo jamii whereby if a son gets married he has to die ambapo iwapo mwana wa hiyo nyumba akioa alipaswa kufa but before you get married you are okay lakini kabla haujaoa hauna shida but none of them was supposed to father a child lakini hakuna mmoja aliruhusiwa kumzaa mwana because of the curse that was there kwa sababu ya laana iliyokuwa pale and because none rose to break that curse they all died na kwa sababu hakuna mmoja aliinuka kuvunja hiyo laana wote wakafa so that repetition of marrying dying marrying dying it, it was a certain pattern kwa hiyo hayo marejeleo ya 
kuoa kufa kuoa kufa kulitengeneza mtindo fulani it was an indicator that there is a cause ilikuwa ni ishara ya kwamba kulikuwa na laana so in some families there are serious negative patterns kwa hivyo katika jamii fulani kuna ishara ama mtindo ambao ni wa uovu na unamaanisha sana that follow them ambao unawafuata Some families never get to a particular level in life. Jamii fulani huwa hawapiki kiwango fulani katika maisha. It could be the education, naweza kuwa katika masomo. Or another issue point, there is a there is a level they are not allowed to reach. Hapa kwa jambo lingine unapata kwamba kuna kiwango ambapo hawapaswi kuifika. Even people can pay fees for you. Hata watu wanaweza wakakulipia kazi. And you run away from the school. Na unatoroka masomo. You can even run away from a university. Hata unaweza kutoroka kutoka kwa chuo kikuu. We have witnessed it. Tumeona mambo kama hayo. You find the pattern is that no you cannot go beyond this level of learning. Unapata kwamba mtindo ni ni ni, ni kwamba hauwezi kukapita kiwango fulani katika maisha. In some families the first boards are poor or wayward. Katika jamii fulani wazaliwa wa kwanza ni maskini ama wamepotoka you find different brothers have got their first bonds and they are all useless unapata ya kwamba ndugu tofauti kama wamezaliwa kwa jamii moja wako na wazaliwa wao wa kwanza na wote ni buri that is an indicator that is a curse should be broken hiyo ni ishara ya kwamba kuna laana inapaswa kuvunjwa even the people who get saved in that family find they are It's a big struggle to make an headway. Hata wale watu wanaokoka katika hiyo jamii unapata ni kungangana ili waweze kujikimu. Now the funny bit the funny bit of it is jambo la kushangaza kwa hilo where where these cases are very much operative ni kwamba mahali ambapo hizi laana ni dhaifu kabisa. And the people who get say na watu wanaokoka you find you are saying that you are not living a right life. Unapata umeokoka na hauishi maisha mazuri. You are confessing to know that you are personal savior. Unamkiri Yesu kama mwokozi wako. But in the reality as you confess you are still committing secret sins. Lakini kama ukweli ni kwamba hata ukikiri unaishi maisha ya dhambi. The reason as to why you are so willing to be committing more sins is because of those altars. Ile sababu ya kusababisha uwe mdhaifu na unaishi katika maisha ya dhambi ni hayo madhabahu. Look at me and I'll be your liar. Unaweza kuwa mdanganyifu wa kawaida, mwongo. And even when you lie
marriages. Ama wanaolewa wakiwa wame wamezeni. Oh, you find they never give birth when they get married. Ama wakiolewa hawawezi wakazaa. In some families you find the first bones die during birth. Uh, kwa jamii zingine unapata wazaliwa wa kwanza kufa wakati wa kujifungua. Some of the in other families some must divorce after some time. Kwa jamii zingine wengine wamepeana wametalakiana baada ya muda fulani. Or in other families there is an age they have to die. Ama kwa jamii zingine kuna umri fulani wanapaswa But these are all indicators of demonic cultures operating in the family. Hakika, hizi ni ishara za madhabahu ya kipepo yanayofanya kazi katika jamii. In some families you find there is a pattern a certain type of sickness or disease. Kwa jamii zingine unapata kwamba kuna aina fulani ya ugonjwa au maradhi. Either there is cancer, labda kuna saratani, either diabetes, kisukari, high blood pressure, kwamba na damu, obesity. Unaona sana mendo problem shida ya kiakili and the, the, the body bill of it na jambo la kushangaza you find somebody knows in our family people suffer from blood pressure unapata mtu ana, anajua katika jamii yake watu huugua ugonjwa wa kupanwa na damu and such a people will eat na hao watu atakula eat beyond the expectations and they have to eat until they get blood pressure anakula Even when they are warned by the doctors, please reduce. Hata akiambiwa kupunguza kula. Because of that altar, kwa sababu hiyo madawa, when they see me, they be oh, I got this one. Today God help me, I have to buy this one. Akiona nyama anasema wewe, Mungu nisaidie leo lazima nyinyi nayo. And they eat until they get sick. Na wanakula mpaka wanaugua. The problem is the altar in their home. Shida ni madawa katika jamii yao. institution unapata kuna ukaba umalaya na kushirikiana watu wa jamii moja kingono those are demonic things hayo ni mambo ya kipepo it ought not to be so i pass you for hivyo you find someone gets saved unapata mtu ameokoka but you are still you are still feeling you should be going with other women na unahisi ya kwamba unapata kuwa unaenda na wanawake wengine you are married. Oh, 
betroth one another before they get married you find them committing sin na ndio sababu watu wanaokosa wanaokosana na kabla hawajaoana unawapata wakitenda dhambi before they are doing together they continue committing sin and when they come to the altar of god they uh, the minister of they are not open to the servant of god in short we have sin they just close themselves and they join together before the house of god and you are alive to the church you are alive before god because the bible says when you are joined together by the man of god or by the servant of god you become one flesh but you come as one flesh and you are alive you are not one flesh na ndio sababu na mtu watu wamepozana na wakiwa hawajaoana wanafanya dhambi ya ushirata na wanakuja katika madhabahu kuunganishwa na mtumishi wa Mungu na Biblia inasema ya kwamba mnapoangalizwa mnakuwa kitu kimoja na mnakuja mbele za Mungu mkiwa tayari mmeshaunganika mkafanyika kitu kimoja na we have so many indicators of these altars na tuna ishara nyingi sana za haya madhabahu so it's you to look at your family again the foundation of your family kwa hivyo ni juu yako angalie jamii yako na msingi ya jamii yako and then you plan you begin now dealing with those foundations na upande na wanza kushughulikia hiyo msingi eh praise the lord bana sifiwe where the pattern is needed you repent genuinely before god bali kwa unahitajika toba utubu kwa wazi mbele za mungu because god forgives kwa maana mungu husamehe when we repent genuinely tunapo tubu vyema vizuri but sometimes you find that is not genuine saa zingine unapata kwamba hakuna toba ya haki ile nzuri ya ukweli you only repent when you are caught in red hand unatubu unapopatikana pepe <laughs> but in case you are not caught you cannot repent kile kama haujapatikana kwa dhambi hauwezi kutubu it's you to look back to your foundation ni wewe utazame nyuma misingi ya the things you are undergoing yale mambo Juu ya maisha yako. Not 
kwa mwisho mabinti kama saitini mambo ya wala 18 Then I'm reading from verse 24 Msalamu shukrani na nini Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things The things are written above there In all these uh, in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you and the land is defiled Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomited out our inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abom abominations, neither any of your own, uh, your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you. And the land is divided, that the land spew not you out also when ye divide it, as it is spewed out the nations that were before you. Nda, msikitie unajisi katika mambo haya hata mwede wako, hayo mambo ya manakili wa pali. Kwa maana, hizo taifa itakazo zitutowa mbeleze, zimekua lajisi kwa mambo hayo yote. Hiyo nchi imekuwa imekuwa na isi na uh, kwa ajili ya hayo na ilipatiliza uongo wake juu ya hiyo nchi ya ya yapiga yatapika wenyewe wake na watu kwa hiyo mtazishika amri zangu na hukumu zangu wala usifanye machukizo hayo mmoja wako yeye aliyemzaliwa wala aliyemzaliwa wala mgeni aketie katika katikati yeye kwa kuwa hao watu wa nchi wameyafanya machukizo haya yote hao waliotangulia mbele zenu na hiyo nchi imekuwa na jisi ili kwamba hiyo nchi isiwatapike na ninyi pia hapo mtakapoitia kunajis kama ilivyo 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 tapika hiyo taifa iliyotangulia mbele so if I when we commit some evils we we divide the earth we divide it and it begins vomiting us out Don't mean though, when the earth is vomiting you, you can't prosper because it's a chemistry, you have devoured it. You keep, you keep running up and down, everything of yours is crumbling down because you have already devoured the earth, and the earth is rejecting you. Because we have got homosexuals. People who are committing evil. What we are now finding hmm? of. And opening the doors and the ways for the devil to attack families. Na kufungua milango na mna na 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 malango ya kishetani kuchambulia kwa fornication and adultery. What we are finding of sins in our church. Killing one another. What you are doing. And therefore, you you become somebody who is being rejected. Telling you, my friend, the presence of the Lord and upon this altar. If you are saved, listen. Come on, and let the world know you are saved. Now watch how you make good joy upon my way. And the Son of God faithful. Don't put your problems ahead of your God. Yes. If you serve God, the Bible says, seek ye first my kingdom. And then my righteousness. And these things you are running after will be added. It does not say seek me and my kingdom. And afterwards, start seeking these things. God says, I will add them to you. But give me the first priority in your life. In your family, give me the first priority. In your business, give me the first priority.
of your hands. No, I mean, Father, we thank you. Yes. You are so wonderful to us. Baby, you are oh, hallelujah. We thank hallelujah. you. We thank you for your word. Yes. We thank you for your precious word. Yes. My dear Father, praying that every well, uh, understanding will be opened by the anointing of the Lord. Yes. Release your blessing upon your people. I speak to our listeners for another year. I speak your blessing upon them. In the name of Jesus. I release supernatural miracles. In the name of Jesus. I 